Hello everyone, it's Rexar here, proud member of Unity, and today we're going to have a look at how to be good commander in Conqueror's Blade. Not commander of your teammates, of course, but commander of your troops. Because in Conqueror's Blade, everyone is a commander. Each player has squads of units that he has to manage on the battlefield. I am going to deeply explain you the very basics of controlling units in Conqueror's Blade. But first, let me tell you about my background in this game. I tried Conqueror's Blade for the first time in Germany on Gamescode 2018, and I got a key there to access all the closed stages of the game. And so I played from the Siege Test 1, and already managed to be in the top 20 leaderboards. I have been putting a lot of time and effort into the game and thus I was in top 20 leaderboards in all the other closed beta tests, sometimes reaching the very top of the leaderboards. There was also an event, kind of competition, called Winter Mayhem organized by Mada.com in which top 10 people in three different categories could win premium accounts. The categories were most wins, most hero kills and most unit kills. Me and some of my teammates managed to win in all three categories. There was also a tournament, two closed beta tests before the open one, and we managed to take second place in Europe after close loss to Ming, the winners of the European tournament. We defeated them during the tournament and sent them to loser's bracket, but they came back from the loser's bracket and defeated us 2 to 1. GG to the Ming players once again. Now, I'm not telling you all this to show off, but to simply explain you where these tips and tricks I'm about to show you are coming from. Me and my teammates were often asked, how do you get so many kills or how do you deal so much damage with your units? And that's why I'm making this tutorial. They have to get something back. Rexar is here. Zero is here. They need to all their... They caught Brownie Brown out of position. They're going to try to kick it. Oh, that spear right into the gut. Brownie Brown's health fell really fast. Rexar's health is low. Ming Ling, Gorg and Brownie Brown are here. And only zero is left, but he is reinforced by Denko Junko. Can they keep this point? Point B is starting to get captured. Oh, but it was not enough. Unity takes this first match. Yeah. Oh, man. That cap's going down too fast. Oh, shiz. No. Wow. No way. Holy crap. Good stuff to Unity. Oh, my God. GG. Unity, they're capturing B. They're capturing B, Unity. Oh my gosh, Unity. Holy hell, Unity has caught it back. Unity is victorious. Oh, damn. All right, that's enough bragging. Now on to the actual tutorial. So the basic orders you can give to your troops are by pressing keys X, C, and V on your keyboard. X, hold this ground. C, follow me. And V, attack nearby units. So let's start with X. Hold this ground. It's a defense stance. If you hold X, you can move your mouse to put your units exactly where you want. You can rotate them by holding A or D, and you can change the formation by scrolling the mouse wheel. Then, after you click left mouse button, you set your units in the formation. Or press right mouse button to cancel and let them stay where they are. You can also put them in the formations quickly by pressing or holding F1, F2, F3. That's how I do it. I almost never use X. You can also set up units next to you in next formation by double tapping X, but again, I never use this. Units in the defensive stance are of course still gonna defend themselves by attacking nearby units. This is not a stand here command, in which they would just stand and let themselves be killed. With exceptions of shield walls, this is important to keep in mind for later, that even though this is defensive stance, units do attack nearby enemies in some small radius. Now to the shield walls. The radius in which your units are going to attack enemy also depends on which type of unit and which formation are you using. For example, if you have your small zone in some formation and choke point on X stands, they can still run a bit away when seeing an enemy. That doesn't happen if you have spearmen holding shield wall in any formation. That's because spearmen are a defensive unit and their main goal is to defend whatever is behind their shield wall, so they don't go and attack units even if they are very close, because that would break the formation and musket shots or arrows could get through. The problem of it is that it makes the X command to actually give just stand here order. They still do some little damage to enemies attacking them from the front. They are poking with the spears, but if shield wall is attacked from behind, then they are not gonna turn and protect themselves, as holding the shield up front is their primary goal. 
so you should never have back of your shields unprotected. C. Very simple. Follow me units. Come to where I am. If you double tap C, they start to run to you. I honestly don't see much of a reason why not to do it, so always double tap, unless you want your troops to come to you slowly for whatever reason. V. Attack. Now this one in some ways is similar to X, mainly if we talk about ranged units. If you have your ranged units on X, holding some ground, of course they are going to shoot incoming enemy, just like they would in V stands. And they will not move anywhere, unless you hold V, which we are going to get into later. But if you press V on melee troops, they are going to attack enemies they see nearby, just like they would do on X, right? But in V, they will attack enemies in much bigger radius. Simply, in V your units are going to attack enemies that are further than if they were in defensive stance. For example, if you want your units to hold some choke point, it's better to have them to defend in X stance, because they will of course defend themselves and attack the enemy, but the primary goal is to hold the choke point, and they will always return there. If you would have them on V, the primary goal is to attack enemies they see. They can attack units a bit further and get away from the choke point and someone could get through. These are the basics that probably most of you know. But what if I told you that we often use X as an attack during pushes or V instead of C to follow me? Not everyone knows that you can also hold V and from those who know it, many people think it means attack here. And if you are surrounded by several squads, you can choose which one to attack this way. That's not correct. Holding V and then choosing a location works exactly the same way like attack ground in strategy games. A lot of people doesn't use this feature in strategies and simply right clicks on the ground to move the units or right clicks on enemy unit to attack. But you can press the attack feature and instead of using it on enemy unit or building, just click on the ground. This gives the unit the order, move here and attack everything in your way, range. This is exactly the same way it works in Conqueror's Blade. Now, why do we want to use this feature and why am I using it so much? Let's start with melee troops. This feature is very good for melee units attacking ranged units. The best would be to charge your units, but if the ability is on cooldown, or the units don't have the ability and you don't want to bait the shots from ranged units yourself, then this is the best way. You can notice that when I hold V and choose location close to archers, then my units spread out and hold their shields up. This makes them cover a lot of shots and arrows by their shields. And the spreading also helps not only against the ranged units, but against cannons and trebuchets and other sieges, and also against unit and hero abilities. A lot of people use X or F1, F2, F3 to move their troops close to archers, but this way they are much more vulnerable, not only because their shields are down, but mainly because the units are all close together and archers have higher chance to hit, plus all the previously mentioned like cannons and hero abilities and so on. On ranged units, I sometimes use it as come to me but protect yourselves. This is a situation that you shouldn't really get into, you should always see your archers and protect them from threats, but they are slower and you can often, after spawning, get much ahead of them to get into battlefield. The road should be safe if you came on it, and so should be your archers, right? So just have them on double tap C so they come faster. Well, then this can happen to your units. Oops. That's why I like to use them on hold V and choose location in front of me. This way they come slower but protect themselves. This made me kill enemy heroes several times. Because they see my muskets moving, they think, oh, the owner of muskets used X or C to make them come to him. Let me jump on them and kill them. But as he gets closer, they delete him. Now if you are really sure the passage to you is safe and after pressing tap you see the way is covered by teammates, then go ahead and double tap C so your units come faster. Another thing I like to do is, if you have some long fight, for example fighting on walls of a castle and you are pushing, but you see there is a lot of enemies ahead, then it's good to hold V and press behind the enemies. This way your archers will push with you and after your frontline pushed and your archers are out of range, they will just move closer. If you had your archers in the back on either X or V stands by just pressing V not holding, remember, they don't move. They just shoot what is in range. Once they are out of range, you need to move them, not if you hold V and choose location. But it also has its downs, of course, and it's better to move your archers closer if it's safe. Because they will get more accuracy and the travel time of arrows is shorter. Because it matters in Conqueror's Blade, it's pretty realistic. If you ever run around enemy archers from distance, you can see arrows falling behind you as they shoot on your current position. But before the arrow reaches you, you are already somewhere else. If you get closer to archers, then they are more likely to hit you. That's why you also want your archers closer, but safe. 
So I mostly move them a bit closer and then do the whole V thing. This way I'm sure they will continue pushing and if I die, I know they have their orders. But orders can be issued even after you die but we will get to this later as well. Now let's go back to X, the defensive stance, and how do we use it as a push technique? So, I told you earlier to remember, units in X are still attacking. This is hold this ground order and not stand here order. This can be used as much stronger push than V. I also said earlier, why V is good against ranged units, because your units are spread out. While with X, it's the opposite. They are all clunked up on top of each other. So for example, you have pikemen and enemy hero is in front of them. What's gonna happen after you press V? Well, they will spread out and some of the pikes will attack the hero, while the rest of the pikes waits behind. But if instead, you order your units to hold the ground and mark area on top of the enemy hero or behind him, then all the pikeman units will go through the enemy hero and attack him. This is lethal for many reasons. First, your units are all clumped up and instead of few pikes attacking him, there can be 10 plus attacking him at the same time. This not only gives him damage super fast, but he gets staggered a lot. And second, you can manage to surround enemy hero like this, and not only he can't get away because of all the stagger going on, but also because he's simply surrounded and there is no way out. Me and most of my teammates are using it only like all the time. On swordsman and pikeman, you basically use it as a second charge when the real charge ability is on cooldown. I call this a berserker mode, because despite the units having so much more DPS, the disadvantage is that they are much easier to kill this way. They are all on top of each other, and that means a good hero ability or a cannon shot, trebuchet, anything. A simple ballista shot can kill several of these units at once. Just as much as I like using this technique, I like to see enemies doing it too. Because when the units are like this on top of each other, attacking some friendly, I can just jump in and wipe whole squad at once with one ability. So these are the very basics, but explained very deeply. And I'll just give you some more tips in the end. Skip the cinematic and put your units where you want. By holding X or F1, F2, F3, you can position your units before the match starts. It helps a lot if you are doing some rush, your units are already on their way. If you are defending, you can move your units where you want before the game starts, and when it starts, you don't need to bother with them anymore and you can just run to your cannon. You can control your units after death, and there is two levels of it. Level 1, right after you die, you can watch any other player and make your units move, attack, hold ground or even use abilities, anything really. But after some time level 2 comes, that's when your units start to retreat. It's around 3 seconds before you respawn, you will hear your units are retreating. And they start to run away mostly in the worst direction possible, running through your shield walls straight into the enemy and dying. Many people think you can't stop it. Wrong. You can, and you can't believe how many kills it gave me. Yes, not only it saves your units, but also helps out on the battlefield. After you hear this sound, your units are retreating, simply press V again. This way you protect them from running to death stupidly, and they may even get you a kill. Since your units will have the retreating sign over their heads, enemies tend to jump on these units, but your units will just shred the owner of this idea. Alright, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you learned something, and if you are interested in something else like specific unit tutorial or specific class or anything else you would like me to make tutorial for, just let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, if you want to watch some streams, one of my teammates, Ferus, is streaming the game, and if you are looking for some Conqueror's Blade videos, I would recommend you to check out Evolos Gaming channel. You can find link to both of them in the description down below. Uh, jump from top, look up! <laughs> 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 <laughs>